I've known Leo Harrington uh, for a long time. Played against him when he played at Matignon High School. And when I look at his extraordinary service to this high school, it's so apt that Louis, Leo Harrington is our designee for extraordinary service induction into the Hall of Fame, Leo Harrington. As of the 1999 season, Leo served as an assistant coach to the football team for 31 years. Over that time, he's seen four Middlesex League champion squad, championship squads come and go. An extraordinary record of achievement. There were a number of memorable games that Leo was involved in, both as a player and as a coach. At Matignon, after Matignon, Leo served in the Marine Corps for six years, subsequently graduated from Boston State in 1969 with a degree in elementary education. He's worked in the Arlington Public Schools ever since as an elementary physical education teacher. He came to Watertown High School in 1969 and brought here by the new head coach, John Barbady. And I know John is here tonight and I know how proud he is of Leo and I'd like to ask John to stand and be recognized none better than John Barbady. You have to go back to that time to have an appreciation of how bad it was. Watertown had not beaten Belmont in a millennium. They were coming off an 0-9 season, and nobody wanted to play the game. And they went from that to league championships in 73, 76, 77, and 83. And they had great players like Tommy Tracy and Sparky Lyle. The 1977 squad was undefeated. It was the first undefeated squad since the 1918 team. And Leo was honored by the Massachusetts Assistant Football Coach of the Year by the Massachusetts High School Football Coaches Association. He's been an extraordinary role model for hundreds of players who have come through this program. Anytime you have an assistant coach who has served in that capacity for 31 years, and at Watertown High School, anybody would tell you that service has been through thick and thin, through good seasons and bad seasons, through fair seasons, but he's been there. He has been one of the constants. And one of the things that this Hall of Fame has wanted to do, right from our very first designee in Dr. Louis Mastrangelo, is to recognize those who have contributed extraordinary service to this high school community. This certainly fits and is an apt description of our honoree tonight, Leo Harrington. Please welcome him. When Bob called me to give me the news, he said, I've got good news and bad news. He said, which do you want to hear first? So I said, I'll take the good news first. So he said, the good news is we're going to induct you into the Watertown Hall of Fame. And I was totally shocked. I never thought of this being an option, being an assistant coach. So I... Uh, recovered from that shock and I said to him, uh, okay, what is the bad news? He said, the bad news is you're gonna be on the docket with Bob Norton and Mike McLaughlin. <laughs> and you've gotta give a 10 minute talk and they're gonna be speaking before you and you know they have never met a microphone that they couldn't love. <laughs> I'm an elementary gym teacher. If I talk for three minutes straight, my kids are going nuts. <laughs> Coach, what's wrong? Why are we talking so much today? We want to play. So, this 10-minute run, Mike McLaughlin hit the nail on the head. 
when he said they should tell you at quarter of seven, I've gone through not 724 speeches, but probably 23. And each one has been more torturous than the next. Mike McLaughlin and I go back a long way. I heard Mike first speak in 1961 in a clubhouse down in Lincoln Park. I was down there working, uh, working out the Lincoln AA, a Sandlot football team. And after practice, we went into the clubhouse, and there was a, a big meeting. And I was uh, the new kid on the block. I was uh, like a rookie. And all these guys were older than I. They were in their 20s. And Mike is up there talking. And I'm saying, what's going on here? And he says, that guy's explaining where the 900 bucks disappeared to from the bank account. I said, he, what? And he goes, yeah, well, guys, you know, Band-Aids are expensive nowadays. And the tape is this, and the tape is that. And they're going, if the 900 bucks isn't back in the bank account on Monday, the team folds. Well, the team folded. That was it. But that was my first meeting with Mike McLaughlin. But that was in the old days before he saw the light. <laughs> Once I met him after he saw the light, 1975, I'll just give you a quick story. We were bartending in a bar in Somerville, and he was having an argument with the owner. He had 13 deductions on his W-2 farm, and the owner couldn't believe he had 13 kids. <laughs> so we had two professional speakers tonight who are totally terrific, and they're worth the price of admission. Now you've got to go back to the amateurs. I'd like to thank the committee for bestowing this honor upon me and my family. It came, like I said, as a total shock. And I would like to thank every one of you for coming here tonight to join in this party and to support the scholarship fund here. I, as an assistant coach, have four head coaches to thank that gave me a chance. My first one was my high school coach, Ronnie Morrell, who was a Watertown guy who hired me as a freshman coach. And then he gave me a second chance. I was so bad my first year, he gave me a second chance coming back when he should have fired me. But he sat me down and he gave me a talk. And for that, I, um, I'll never forget him for. The second guy who gave me a chance to coach at the varsity, who, second guy who hired me gave me a chance to coach at the varsity level, Bobby Currier. He uh, was just appointed the head coach at Don Bosco Tech. I think there were like uh, two people who applied for the job. Don Bosco had lost like 23 games in a row. They had given up more points than any team in the state in the previous two seasons. So it wasn't one of you call one of the great jobs around. But when Bobby talked to me about it, I said, Bobby, it's a schools in Boston. You can't tell me that we can't find 11 tough kids to put on the field. So that's at least the start. We went over to Don Bosco. I was over there for two years, and then John gave me a call about coming to Watertown for another rebuilding job. To finish off the Don Bosco story, they made the right decision. In Bobby's third year at Bosco, he had a championship team. John had a rebuilding job ahead of him in Watertown. As Bobby Norton had said, they were 0-9, and Gabby Hayes was in the movies, it seemed, the last time that they had beaten Belmont. And it all started right up the street here, 31 years ago, at the Armenian Church Hall, when about this time of year, they had a sports banquet. And they invited the new coaching staff to speak. So it was John, Dick Manjurian. John was uh, Mr. Excitement, and Dick Manjurian was Mr. Intensity, the most intense guy that I have ever coached with in my 35 years of coaching. And Peter Hall, who just graduated from Harvard, and myself. And we went to the sports night, and we all spoke briefly. John spoke last, and John got up there and says, the losing's going to end. And so everyone's going, yay, terrific. <laughs> then the next thing he goes, and we're beating Belmont. And some guy in the front row said to him, when? And he says, I guarantee you we are going to beat him this year. And the guy said, you're going to guarantee we'll beat Belmont? He said, that's right. I guarantee it. You can write it down. So we went out in the parking lot, and John was all excited. And he said, how did I sound? <laughs> Peter Hall and I looked at each other and said, John, 
do you know what you said? I said, yeah, that's on the bulletin board in Belmont tomorrow morning. Bob Eady guarantees Watertown's gonna beat Belmont. To make a long story short, a name that has been tossed around a few times here tonight, we opened up with Ringe Tech at Victory Field, and popping out on a quick trap was Randy Luck. And I heard that Luck name mentioned, and Luck sprints down, it was an over 50, it was about a 55 yard touchdown run. He's running by the Watertown bench. Everyone's going nuts on the sideline. He's heading to the clubhouse end zone. Andy Pappas, Muggsy McGuire, Ronnie Torrey play great defense. Watertown beats Ringe Tech, the losing's over with. Then fast forward to Belmont. We come into Belmont and we're playing Belmont at victory and we just kick their butt. 18 nothing. Muggsy McGuire blocks a punt down the Austin Street end zone, and we score a touchdown on the block punt. So we did it, and we were launched. But we still had a lot of work to do. And what I would do is, before I get into that, I've neglected, I've gone, I get so excited about seeing Mike McLaughlin after all these years. What I've got to do is I've got to introduce my family. Because you, you, you have to know it, if you looked at the video, you saw a picture of my two daughters up there. When John started this program at Watertown, it was uh, really a family-type venture. We used to go away to camp with 100, 120.